Good day, friends of Buzzy. I'm Dr. Amy Baxter, and I am wearing my doctory coat today because I am going to give a very quick lecture to both dermatologists who are prescribing Dupixent and to any families who are trying to deal with giving Dupixent to their children at home. I lecture a lot about needle pain and needle phobia, and most of my lectures tend to be directed to a pretty small subset of people, either the adults who are afraid of needles or to children who are on chronic injections. In the United States for biologics, there are about 300,000 children who have juvenile arthritis. So they have to get different kinds of biologics at home and have to get used to giving them to themselves. Dupixent is also a biologic, meaning that it is an immunomodulatory drug, so it decreases when it decreases the immune system going haywire. Just like in coronavirus, when you have problems with an overactive immune system, children and adults with asthma, with arthritis, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, with diabetes, with eczema, allergies, asthma, all of these things are some degree of the immune system overreacting. Psoriasis is another example. The category of medications that dampens down the immune system is sometimes shortened to being called biologics or immunomodulators. Now, while a small group of children have autoimmune disorders where they need to have biologics on a regular basis, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis is another place where you might see Humira or Enbrel or other different kinds of immunomodulators. We now have a pediatric indication for a drug called dupilumab or dupixent. This is the first time where we have 30 million rather than 300,000 children who are trying to take a medication at home or who are getting it at their dermatologist's office. The other interesting part is that dermatologists usually are not the ones who are giving these painful injections in the office. Usually it's rheumatologists, endocrinologists, but for dermatologists, it may be a new scenario. Certainly if your practice is both peds and adults. What we're gonna do today is talk about what we've learned from the rheumatology field in giving biologics and what the barriers are and how to set your kids up for success or your adults if they're having to give medications at home because of COVID. I'm going to quote from a fantastic resource which is in a 2017 uh, rheumatology therapy article and Dr. Schiff et al actually asked a lot of questions to two different groups in two different ways of patients who were taking biologics and quit. And what they found was that it's not just the giving of the shot that's the issue. There are a lot of places in the process that set someone up for a bad experience. That is kind of the spectrum of what we're gonna talk about of all of the different places from diagnosis to initial education, to options, to being prescribed something, to figuring out how to give it, succeeding or failing, making that into a, a continuum, and then eventually either deciding to change medications or coming up with a successful system. So let's talk about that. Research has shown that between 60 and 70% of patients who are prescribed a biologic medication ultimately go off that medication. One of the big reasons is because the anticipation of having a successful outcome is very strong. And when patients don't feel like they can tolerate the injections or there is a lot of difficulty with them, then there's a superimposed shame, uh, reluctance to continue on the medication, and patients may even be more likely to underestimate how much impact the medication is happening. So if you've got a patient who's going to go on to Pixent, or if your child is going to go on to Pixent, starting at the diagnosis phase is a little different with eczema, asthma, and the allergies that are being treated with this particular immunomodulator. 
your kid already knows they have this and many are going to be looking at this medication as a life-changing event so because the effects of the medication are fantastic because they may be really built up there needs to be a realistic expectation of what is involved in getting to the finish line by taking a few cycles of the medication to be better uh, from this atopic dermatitis, the psoriasis, all of the different things that have been plaguing your child for a long time. So it is appropriate to go, this is gonna be great, it's very likely to help you a lot, but also think of it and set it up for the child as a journey. That This is not just a one-time thing, you kind of go through this process and this is gonna be wonderful. The expectations need to be set. One thing people ask me all the time is, well, do you tell them it hurts? And how do you answer the question, is it going to hurt? Easiest way to do this for a child is to deal with the issues of fear honestly. There are words that elicit fear. Um, poke, sharp, burn, sting. You want to avoid all of those connotations. Instead, you can say, well, there are some people who are a little bothered by it, and some people aren't that bothered. Since we're gonna do this a couple times with you, we can try a few things at the beginning and you can decide how it is, if you need them the next time, or if we wanna try different things. We have a different environment in this day and age because starting in 1982, we began giving booster injections as part of the CDC's vaccine schedule. This enabled us to decrease childhood diseases and fatal diseases by 99.99%, but it also set up a generation to be more afraid of needles than people who were born before 1982. I hear a lot from other doctors about how they just need to suck it up and deal, and invariably those doctors were born in the 60s or 70s or 50s. I was born in 69. I didn't have to get six injections on the same day when I was five. I got six injections total before I was two years old, so I don't remember. Consequently, it's a little disingenuous to say they need to suck it up if you yourself did not have to go through this process. Kids today get 36 separate injections before they are six years old, and they get a lot of them on the same day when they're old enough to remember. So that's why there's a lot of needle phobia going into this, and it's worth being sensitive to it. Children born in 2000, 63% of them were afraid of needles. So Odds are two thirds of your kids who are gonna go on this are gonna be afraid. So we've got a bunch of different um, supports for kids that over the years and adults have told us they've got problems with needles. So these are all evidence-based. There's a link to it on the Pain Care Labs website. But we start with Seven Secrets for Shots, which deals with not only pain, but also two very important aspects, fear and focus. So what the kid experiences is really a Venn diagram of how much they're afraid of it. And then also during the experience itself, how much they're focusing on what's happening as well as the pain. So uh, so in managing the expectations, that is going to be critically important to deal with fear. Because if a kid knows what's coming, they at least know that they're going to be able to get some control around it. They're not going to be blindsided. It's not going to be something that they didn't expect. If they know it's going to be a big deal, without making them afraid, they're actually better able to cope. One study looking at fear reactions to blood donation found that when patients were asked, how afraid are you of having blood drawn out of your arm? they actually were less likely to faint. They were less likely to have uh, nausea, those kind of feelings. The hypothesis was that if they've got a license and an opportunity to talk about it, it normalizes it and they don't have to feel the problems of shame in addition to the fear. So manage expectations. Is it gonna hurt? Well, needles aren't comfortable, but we're gonna try some new things to make this better for you. And we've got a couple different times to try so if you don't like how it feels the first time, we have other things that we can try. So manage those expectations. There's often a disconnect between when a patient is told, take this home and give it, and then they're at home with their child who is screaming, running away, hiding, and normally the child is a very 
reasonable 12 year old, they're embarrassed about their own reaction, but they're afraid. It's much better if you can set up with the parent um, or if you're the parent, if you don't get the information you need from your doctor to help, don't be satisfied with that. Make sure that there's enough discussion about how difficult is this going to be for you to give to your kid at home. All right, and then rituals. So one of the great things that Schiff found in their paper was that most patients who are on biologics end up developing rituals around giving themselves the injections. Biologics tend to be thicker, they're more viscous, they can burn. So because of that, there is a bit of girding oneself up for battle that happens in the context of doing the injections. When your patient or your child is going to be getting Dupixent, it's not a bad idea to go ahead and set up the expectation of a positive ritual that, are, that surrounds it. Comfortable place, let the child pick music, pick some nice food to come after, and go ahead and set those things up for an event so that there is already a, a bit of a ritual in place. Now, one of the things for more advanced issues with uh, Seven Secrets for Shots, we've actually gone past magic tricks for needle sticks uh, to advanced needle fear solutions. There's a whole other lecture on what to do if your kid is already terrified of needles, and you're gonna need to do a little advanced extra work and involve them on lots of different ways to try to overcome something that's already set up. One thing that is useful is that Dupixent is usually a time prescribed number of injections. So it's not something that's going to be forever. And whether it's a sticker chart, whether it's a color something in all black, if the person knows they don't like it and just just completely eliminate and make it a, a black hole of having to take that injection so that they can tell when their series is completely done. And once it's all completely looks like a black hole, then they're finished and their skin is going to be clear as well, that kind of thing. So set that up. Um, but during the actual event itself, you want to deal with a couple things, the pain, the fear, and the focus simultaneously. Pain, first of all, take the medication, and warm it to room temperature. The instructions say to use 30 minutes, but you can also, after it's been out room temperature for 30 minutes, even putting it in your hand for just a few minutes before giving it so that it's not cold. The less cold it is, the closer to body temperature, the more comfortable it's going to be. Different people have different experiences with speed and with slowness. In general, slowness tends to be more comfortable, but some kids and adults are wanting to just slam it in, get it done as fast as possible. That's something that's worth discussing before you give the injection. For pain itself, Buzzy combines two different physiologic mechanisms to block pain. One of the first ones is ice. Now, even if you don't have a Buzzy, you can leave ice on the site where you're going to have it. With Buzzy, the ice packs are hard, and if you're giving this in the office and you're the physician, you want to use the ones that are healthcare that you can clean in between patients. I got this out of our freezer, but uh, you can see that it had a specific patient uh, number on it, but this is frozen solid, and you can clean it. If you're at home, the ice packs have a soft side, so it's not quite as cold, or a really intense side that's as intense as the healthcare one so that you can make the ice as cold as possible. Now, on the blogs for giving biologics, people suggest up to 10 minutes. Camps that are giving the Humira biologic before they took the citrate out found that really you max out at about two minutes. The benefit of ice happens at about two minutes. So let's say you're doing a sub-Q infection here You'd want to put the ice on for about two minutes. And if you do have a buzzy, then you want to also be stimulating the nerves that are connected to the pain, the, to the spinal cord where sensations go. So you can block out pain. So putting the, the cold and the vibration together for about two minutes. And then even if it's just ice, when you're actually ready to give the injection, slide it up in the same nerve pathway. And so give the injection right under where the desensitization was happening, but don't take the desensitization off because you're still gonna be blocking the transmission 
of the fast pain nerve. So this is what you can do for pain. They're also, just for the skin itself, there are medications like Elemax or Emla. Those have to be on for at least 30 minutes for Elemax and at least an hour for Emla. If you are using them, you need to know that they're only gonna take care of the skin part. They're not gonna take care of the deeper down part. So some kids are going to be more anxious when it's held in place and when they know that the injection is coming. Again, this is gonna be a discussion that is had about what your ritual is gonna be and whether the person who's getting the injection would prefer to have some glad present seal stuck on there with a numbing cream or whether that's gonna make them more nervous. So deal with that. That's one way to deal with the pain as well. Fear mostly is going to be addressed by having some control when patients and when people feel like they're more in control of pain, they actually report less pain. If you are in a clinical trial getting electric shocks and you are told to stop when you can't stand it anymore and they will stop immediately, you record less pain than when you're intermittently given shocks and you have no control over it. Same people, same amount of stimulus, but control lowers pain. So whether it's holding this, having the, the adolescent or child hold this themselves, whether it's being able to choose a lot of different options. Again, we've got tons of different uh, things to think about here, but having control over some of the process and the ritual can decrease fear. Now, focus is probably the most underrated and by far the cheapest and easiest thing to deal with at the time of the injection. So whether there is a ritual of doing one big long exhale, which requires concentration on that, whether there is a task during the actual injection, or whether there is a, um, a, a counter stimulus, like drinking a sweet liquid or smelling an aromatherapy, but having something that takes your brain's focus off of the injection and onto something else helps. Now, the, the research is actually best for cognitive tasks that are not too difficult. So the tell me about your dog, Timmy, too difficult. And of course, if you're the parent giving it, you know about their dog. And you know the kid's not named Timmy, so then that's kind of strange. Uh, but the distraction of can you find the how many monkeys are touching the bed? All right, that's actually, go ahead, try it at home. The distraction cards are a bit more difficult than they seem because with that particular question, if you said three, I would say you're wrong. And then you have to look harder and then the injection's already done. But the, the actual answer is five. But if you'd said five, I would have said, you know what? That little guy is actually in front of the bed. Maybe you need to play more video games so you can do this uh, 2D, 3D thing better. The questions are all on the back. These have been found to decrease pain 50% by themselves. And when added to Buzzy, 88%. If you don't have these, then a really good distracting question to ask is to combine visually counting something that's out of context. One idea is if there is a sentence written across the room, count how many letters have holes in them. We're used to seeing letters as meaning, and as part of a word, we're not used to seeing them separately as a shape. So if there's a word wearable, for example, I'm looking at it and there's E, A, A, E, four. It, the amount of time it takes to do that is enough time to distract and it occupies the anterior cingulate gyrus that is dealing with the assessment of risk. So focus changes how much the brain is able to appreciate pain Decreasing fear decreases the perception of pain, and actually dealing with pain takes care of pain. We have a number of needle fear friendly videos on our channel. There are different ones talking about getting flu shots, talking about how to address um, IVF, how to address IV, uh, like an IV, looking at the vascular access, I've got some webinars. So there are other places where you can get more detail. But in summary, if you got a kid who's on Dupixent, make sure they are prepared for the fact 
that they're going to get a lot better, but it is going to take a process and that they have the opportunity to make the injection part better if they don't think it's comfortable to begin with. Some kids aren't that bothered. So you lay that out. The disconnect between what you're expecting and what the kid's expecting needs to be addressed with information. Make sure that you talk to your doctor or if you're a doctor, you talk to the patient about what they anticipate is going to be an issue because everything will go more smoothly and the patient will continue to get their injections if they have a plan and they understand that there are options. And so finally, try to make things as pleasant, as comfortable, as secure as possible with rituals that you plan and with the understanding that there are other different ways that you can adapt in the future. And finally, I will tell you the story that one of the people who works for Pain Cure Labs is a nurse and her daughter is 13 and is absolutely stoic and has no problems getting medications. She doesn't even need to use a buzzy for her flu shot. However, when she took the Dupixin at home her first time, even with the buzzy and the ice, she cried. And part of why she cried was because she wasn't expecting it to burn as much as it did. This is the perfect example of making preparation to get a better outcome. She has a plan for next time. She's gonna change some variables. She's not worried about what happens next time, but more importantly, she had this little spot of eczema and it was constantly bleeding and cracking and now it's not. So she's getting better. So use the fact that after they start taking the medication, they're feeling better. They are getting better. A lot of the issues that made them either embarrassed or scared or are really taken care of and let them know what a positive experience it is to get the medicine that makes them better. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, as with everything, you can tell them after they're getting their injection that, you know what? We only have to do this a little longer and it's going to be fine.